So if we, if we step up to the, let's say U14, 15, I think it's the same. We don't have to revisit the, I think the, the only thing I'll say about the focus of practice skill development stuff is just everything kind of levels up a little bit. So the systems, it's a little bit more structured than it was the previous years. Um, we're still doing all the, all the things that you just talked about. It still all applies here. So I just want to focus a little bit more on just the differences from the previous level. So a uh, big one, obviously, is this when body checking starts happening, right? I think you, what is it, U13 or U14 starts? I think it's U14, think it's Bantam Minor. Bantam Minor. So Sub I U14. think the kids are 13 years old. Yeah. Yeah. So the 13 year old year. Yeah. Yeah. 13, 14, yeah. 15, 16 years. That's hitting. Yeah. So body checking is a big one. You can take these in whatever order you want. So body checking is the big one. Then we start getting the distractions of you're a teenager now. So that's going to high school. They, everyone starts to get like the I'm a beauty hockey player vibe. Um, those kinds of things a little bit more of the stuff away from the rink starts to be important like a little bit of training or a little bit of learning about the lifestyle of being a hockey player that starts to come into it um, and then maybe a little bit about roles understanding what kind of player you are that probably starts to happen a little bit around that that age and then tied in with all that is this is kind of puberty central now these ages 14 and you 14 15 so you can take those in whatever or do you want, maybe you could start with the, how, how body checking and puberty, those That's two things. That's exactly where I was going to go because they kind of tie into yeah. each other. Yeah. Like this is a real interesting year. Uh, it could happen the year or two before, but this is actually where it really happens where you'll get a kid who, um, who grows like he's a big, he's a big boy now. Like he could be, a, he could be hitting the six foot mark. Maybe some guys are even taller. And you have some other kid that is still look like little babies. Uh, I, and I'll use an example, like I don't like to do this too often, but like I'm going to use Easton Cowan, right? So uh, Charlie used to play against him, like those guys are the same age. And when he was young, I always said, like, this kid's got some smarts, he's a good player, makes plays. Like I said that, like when he was in Pee Wee. I'm like, where, where did he play minor hockey? Elgin. Elgin, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I said, what a nice player. Like he could make, and he was always smaller. And um, he, he just, he was a, a great player to watch. He just made good plays and he worked hard and all that stuff. There was no hitting. And then the minor Bantam year happened when there was hitting. And, and honestly, like if you ever listen to this, it's not a, it's not a carve. It's just a natural thing. He's the first round pick in the NHL. But the minor Bantam year came and obviously that team was really good, the Elgin team. And then all of a sudden uh, the Windsor team was beating them quite well, well most of the time. And outplaying them, and it was like, what the hell happened? Well, puberty happened, or body checking happened. It was a different type of player, and and Easton at that time was um, less, very, very, very less noticeable. He was tiny, so uh, that's not his fault that he's that the, you know he just doesn't have the testosterone yet. So did he compete hard? Yeah, probably. I, I don't even know. Maybe he was scared. I don't know. But he wasn't the same player. And then he got to junior, and he's a good player. Like whatever. But the body checking, so you, you take a kid that is 12, 13 years old, or yeah, 13 years old, and he hasn't hit puberty yet, and he's playing against a guy that has had has hit puberty for the last two years. Like, that's a difference. Like, you're the same age, but you're two, three years apart physically. And that's a big, big difference, especially when there's body contact. So now you got a kid that's 13. He's got a mustache or can grow a beard, which you see. And he's six inches taller, and he's heavier. And you're going in, in into corners with him or open ice hits, and it's like there's a big difference. So kids could get scared. Um, and then on the on the flip side, that big guy or the kid that hit puberty early can dominate a game, and he's really maybe not even that good of a player. Like in two years, he might be the worst guy on the team. It happens all the time. But you, there's this false um, this false perception that this guy is a gr great player, and it's just he's just physically older. That's the, basically the bottom line. So the body checking piece is like you, you, you know, there's, so this is where from a skill development standpoint, if you go back and right back up to U8, U7, U10 and all that stuff, that's why it's very, very important. Like it seems like such a simple coaching cue, but it's always keeping your head up, always having your head on a swivel. Like no matter what you're doing, if you catch a pass, if you can catch it with your head up because the game slows down. So if you can see, contact coming then you can make decisions quicker so that's why it's really important to teach that skill keeping your head up all the time and i know it seems like yeah well no shit but it's not taught a lot or it's not taught enough like keeping the head up so because if you could if you can have the skill of having your head up the games the game slows down 
just a little bit, just enough so that you can make plays, right? So if someone's coming across some kid with this <laughs> testosterone, he wants to, <clears throat> in his first year of body contact, wants to take your head off because now you're allowed to, and you're catching a puck and you're staring down at the puck like that. And then before you look up, a guy hammers you. It's like, like it's, it's that, that happens all the time. So if you can teach that skill of having your head up, that's, it's a big thing. And then the body contact thing also is, um, it's it would be a good thing to learn how to roll off of hits uh learn how to stay tight to the boards you know a lot of people think the boards are going to hurt you but that's it's actually not true the boards are actually will protect you because you only get hit once if you do get hit and learning how to roll off of checks and stuff like that um and realizing that like for me i remember i was I, body ch- body contact never bothered me but i do do remember there's the first couple games in the OHL when I was 16. Uh, I remember coming down the boards at home. We were doing our home game. We we're playing Windsor Spitfires. And I was coming down the boards with speed. And it was a big D, like a big older hairy D. You know, and I'm in my head, slow motion. I just remember, I go, you're going to do this or what? And I, I, you know, I did a soft chip and went at it and took a little piece and got through them. I said, okay. And then after, after you do that a few times, it's like, okay, you're, you can do this. So like when you look across, you can get very intimidated sometimes if you're that guy, but it's a ma- matter of getting engaged and, and, and just facing it. Right. Yeah. I think two things about that. One is it's about, that's about the point when like, when the violent part of the game starts to happen, that you, you start to realize like hockey is actually a tough game. And this is where you'll start to figure out whether you actually want to play or not, because if you can't handle that and and some of that is just being prepared for it, right? Like if you get blindsided, like no pun intended, not blindsided by a hit, but blindsided by the fact that I can get hit because nobody prepared you for that. That can make you scared, man. When you're a little kid, like that can make you scared. Like you get a big boy that already hit puberty. Like we got one kid in here. He's a Oh nine. He's a big boy and he just wants to hammer guys. So if you're on the short end of the development curve in that age and you got this kid coming to coming to crush you and you weren't ready for that, it's like that can that can give you a little bit of trauma. It could be a little bit of traumatic for you where you're like, I don't want to do that. Like that sucks. You know? So that's one thing is that prepared piece that you pointed out is important. And then the other thing is this is this is around the age and it continues up through U16 where kids can start to be discouraged because maybe they didn't grow yet. And because you start to get impatient because the draft is so young oh, in Ontario for the OHL kids, it's like you have to be ready early for that kind of thing, you know? And like we got, I know there's a kid in here that I've had several conversations with where he's still just small. He's just small and he's a good player. He's feisty. He's got good bite to him. And I've had some conversations with his mom and his mom's like, Oh, I don't know. Like he's, he seems like he's a little bummed out. I'm not sure if he feels like he can still play and like all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, dude, you're 15, man. Like you're, you're 16. You have so much space to grow and you're actually a good player. Like you have a good base to work with. So that would, that'd be the only other thing I would encourage parents to help their kids with is when they feel like they're behind or maybe like they thought they were good but but no I guess nobody else thinks so that's another line that I've heard from some of these kids it's like sometimes you just need more time to grow so if you're willing to be in the fight and you like playing and you the the hitting and the contact doesn't scare you and you just enjoy playing don't let that that gap because of puberty or because of growth or whatever be the reason that you're discouraged you know, you can, if you understand it, it's another thing. You just understand like, okay, like I'm waiting for to grow. Like this sucks. I gotta, I gotta wait for my, for the growth to happen. Cause that'll give me a big boost, but be patient until that time. And don't, don't quit early, you know, like don't pack it in early because that's not a good enough reason. You know, if you give yourself some time, you could end up being a good player. And we're having guys with us. Like we just had a, like Warren Clark's a good example of a, a guy that undrafted to the OHL. I don't know how big he was in, in his big, draft year. Big boy. In his draft year, he was a big boy too? Yep. Okay, whatever. If he's he went undrafted to the OHL, plays a junior B year, plays a year in Manitoba, and then he gets a scholarship and drafted to the NHL. Like when he's when he's in his sixteen year old year and doesn't get drafted, he's probably thinking the same thing like a lot of these kids are thinking, like this is no good. Now, granted, if he's a big boy, then that doesn't like what I'm saying isn't a direct application of the the example, but you, you get my point. It's just like wait, just wait, man. Just keep working and just hang on be patient you know yeah. well and something that's very important i tell this to all my kids and the ones that listen they're safe is you know i told my son from a very young age very 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 young age just head up because you never know and i'm talking like even in 
U10, you never know when someone might take your head off. And that could be a total accident. Like even in warm up, you've seen guys get hit in warm up and they're out. There's there's a there's a habit that you should create when you're young and all the way through is always having an awareness that at any point you um, you get uh, you're protecting yourself. So what I told my son and anybody else is when when you're making a play or don't have a puck, like if you make a pass for example, boom, don't never admire it. Like make a play and you have your stick stiff arms. So if someone does come in, you're there to protect yourself. Now I'm not, I actually don't care. But if it happens that you take someone's, you know, you come up high on someone and you, for protecting yourself, it's like, oh, well, at least I didn't get KO'd. You know, I'm not saying skate around the ice, cross checking guys in the face, but you make a play and you, you need to be stiff armed, ready to, to engage contact at all times and being aware. Very important. Another thing that will actually help a lot of kids this is probably very, very neglected is doing neck training, um, working on having a strong neck because it would help you if you do get hit hard from your head snapping. So if you have a weak neck, you know, that's going to, you know, that's how you get concussions, right? So if you can have a, like a really strong neck, that's doing a lot of neck exercises. You can look them up if you want, um, do a boxing workout with neck exercise. It's going to really help you, uh, help you prevent some concussions. So I think that's very, very important. But I do remember the first time I really learned about stiff arming, that's where I got the lesson from. It's my first OHL camp when um, I was 16 years old. And um, those used to be blood baths, by the way, right? I remember tying my skates, we go on the first scrimmage, and there was like three guys that walked in before our game. One had his, his nose smashed, another guy's full of blood. I'm like, oh my God, what am I getting into? But uh Anyways, we were in our scrimmage, and I went on Craig Duncanson. He was a first-round pick. He just coached the Sudbury Wolves last year, um, but he was a first-round pick to the NHL. He was a team. He was a Sudbury Wolves captain, and uh, I was playing against his team. And uh, I went to go finish my hit. Not, I wasn't running him, but I was just, you know, finishing my hit. And boom, he had the sh- the this much stick showing. And when I when I went to finish, he just his natural reaction was to, yeah. to give you a, that short cross check across, like in between the shoulder oh, pads yeah. and the elbow pads. Tricep, I'm like oh. the worst. And I, I I did that twice, and I said, okay, well, that's a lesson. Like it was good to know, like okay, this this is a different league. Like you you don't just get to hit me because I'm going to hurt you first. You're not going to want to do this. You're making yourself miserable to play against, right? So that's that's another way to. I guess I'm on another tangent here, but like from the physical side of it, it's it's like it always looks like. The guy that's doing the hitting is is um, is is uh, I don't know winning the battle I guess, but doing that a, a little thing like that, making it uncomfortable for people to hit you. They guys back off. Some do, some do, and some don't. So if you if you're a smaller guy and that stick comes across like just to, just to let them know like no you're not doing that to me without paying a price, then you can create yourself a little bit of room. That's a great lesson to teach as a coach. It's like make whether you're giving the hit or taking the hit. The other person pays the price for it, man. Nobody gets a free pass when they're around you. That goes like D in front of the net, along the boards, finishing hits, whatever it is. That's a, that's a really good lesson. Um.